Alright guys, today taking the motor out of the moped. I've already gotten the drive chain and the pedal chain off. The stator's already pulled out so there's no wiring hooked up. And I've gone ahead and I've propped up the moped with this metal gear I got from the scrapyard. And it's wedged up against a box in the front. So it shouldn't roll anywhere. So the only thing holding this engine in should be three bolts. So uh, let's get them out. Uh, every day since I bought this thing, I've actually been soaking down all the bolts with PB Blaster because I knew that I was going to need to take this engine out. I mean, first time I saw this moped, I tried to kick it over. Didn't happen. I already knew I had to take this out. Wow, they're actually kind of loose as it is, so alright. Either Age, PB Blaster, or somebody had intended to take it out and did not. Uh, I'm not complaining, they didn't fight me. So, just have to hope that I can get them out without damaging the casting any further. All right, I've got my mallet. I thought I had a drift or something. Let's see. How stuck are these? They're actually not. I should be able to just pull those two out. That one too. Cool. I'm going to leave the middle one, but I'm going to pull the lower bolt first. There's the lower bolt. Hopefully they're all the same size. Uh, oh, there's a lot of dirt still in that casting at the top. It's just wedging up. There's a lot of farm sediment blocking that bolt from being able to come out of its hole. Actually, that was a lot better. Upper bolt. So far, looks like we have the same hardware. And then the the final bolt. Doesn't mean the engine's going to just fall right out, but it might. It's been in here longer than I've been alive. And final verdict is all three bolts are exactly the same, so I don't have to worry about getting anything mixed up. Now, that didn't take much persuasion at all. Now all I have is the clutch cable. Anyway, I'm going to cut this and I'll just resume once the clutch cable is removed. There actually is a little bit of fluid left in here. I uh, would not have thought there would be. but it stinks. So it's not just transmission fluid at this point. It's a medley of fluids, farm fluids, mystery fluids, exciting stuff. Now it's time for one of my least favorite activities when rebuilding an engine, and that's loosening the case bolts. Uh, nothing brings me more displeasure than stuck case bolts. So, gosh, where do you even start? I guess let's start with the rustiest looking ones. Let's go with the most uncooperative looking of the bunch. I have a flat blade screwdriver and a crescent wrench. If I add enough downward pressure and use the crescent wrench for leverage, I can spin them free. But you have to press down. You have to make sure this stays seated in that screw or you're going to tear it up. 100% chance. I do have one of those impact drivers. It's just I'd have to move both mopeds to get it. 
and I don't want to. So we'll see if something fights me enough to make me want to get up, move both mopeds, and get my impact driver. Because it's going to take a lot. So far, so good. Things you say you wish you had some wood to knock on. This is going to be a lot of fun to clean this case. I can tell right now it is so crusty on the outside. And this is after pressure washing it. I even turned it over on its side. I didn't even film that and I pressure washed the bottom, but all this crap is still here. Oh boy. I'm gonna need to buy a new wire brush. It is really hot in this garage. That's trash. But how do I get this really stuck bolt out? Hmm. I don't know. It's like really stuck. Well, funny story. Went and got my impact driver, because this bolt would not come out. And I shattered the bit. I guess I have to drill that bolt out, because it is not coming out on its own. Alright, now I can lightly tap the case. Actually, that sounds like it might be loose. Oh! Alright, y'all ready for this? How bad's it gonna be? Actually, that's not too bad. That should clean up. The bearings are obviously ruined from the rust stain over here. So, I mean, that's no huge surprise. But the transmission area looks fine. Completely fine. A little bit of uh, grime in the bottom, but nothing too concerning now I can't take the clutch off yet because the clutch puller I ordered has not yet come in but I can try to pull the crank out of the casting here I don't want to hit that well let's see what can I hit here Try to get some oil in between. Come on, baby. Looks like it's predominantly that seal. <clears throat> Can I get underneath that seal or knock it out? Well, there it is. Man, those bearings are stuck. Wow, look how rusty that crank is. This thing actually has a water line. And you can see, going straight across, it had a good three quarters of an inch of standing water in the bottom of this engine. This bearing's still fine. Well, fine-ish. Actually has a lot of play in it. Oh boy. Alright. Well, before I can put the new crank in, which I did get in the mail today, I would actually like to hold it up and see how this looks. Oh, so fancy.
thing was surprisingly expensive. Okay. I don't want to handle it too much, but I do want to see... There are multiple different engine types. I'm pretty sure I got the right one. Yeah, it looks about right. A couple snap rings on there. Gosh, that is nice, though. Very nice stock crank. Got the needle bearings in there. The question is, is the crank length the same? Yeah, it looks like it. All right, well, as soon as I can get this bell housing off for the clutch, we're going to rebuild this engine. But in the meantime, I need to clean this case. This is disgusting. So, let's remove the dead. Gosh, what can I do with this crank? Normally I would save stuff like that for like a metal sculpture or something, but even in this case, I, I honestly have no idea what the heck I would make with it. Alright, this helps keep everything oiled. It's the giant counter gear. And it's also a splashing mechanism. Wow, that's really, really good shape. I might just keep those bearings on there. Because they don't seem like they have any play in them. They don't, they're not giving me any reason to believe they're damaged. I just need to spray them out with carb cleaner and re-oil them with some ATF uh, Type F. One amount of transmission fluid, that is. So I will sit that in the keep bucket for now. Hmm, that is quite crusty. Alright, well, I will spare you all the details on how I'm going to clean this, because uh, personally, right now, I have no idea how I'm going to do it. But uh, we'll come back once it's clean. Well, I got them as clean as I can get them. That's all corrosion and pitting, but I've got it sanded down to where when you're rubbing against it, you're not getting black residue or anything. Nothing's coming off of that. Uh, obviously, the transmission is spotless, which is great. I shot a little bit of uh, Rust-Oleum aluminum spray paint on the outside because it was just as ugly as that. So... And we have a serial number now, which I did not previously see. So, I do have my fan on in here because it is unseasonably hot in this garage, so, oh well. I was really amazed, though, there actually was not any sealant in between the two case halves, which leads me to believe somebody was in this engine before me. So... At least I'll be the last one in here, because I know I will do the job right. So, off to the next. Well, since I can do no further good with the engine, let's try to get the condenser pressed out of this plate. Because I got a new one. It's a little different, so I hope it'll fit. Alright, the idea is where these four screws are those are going to be the strongest points so I will sit it right there and try to drift the condenser out just trying to figure out what size this condenser is um, let's try the green one that might do it actually so I do want to put some energy into it, but not enough that we're going to damage anything else. I'm just going to use a brass hammer. So, oh. wish me luck. Okay. That socket is shade too big. I'm afraid. So, let's go with... That's a 12 millimeter this time. Let's see if we can actually. Hey! Alright. 12 millimeter socket caps right out. 
So I need to desolder the wires. So I guess if you don't like the sound of this firing up, cover your ears now. I'll find a wire brush. The handle of my wire brush snapped earlier. I had this thing forever. I was cleaning the engine case and it just went that I did not need that rather loyal to my tools so now I need to find one just like it alright try to get this heated up it usually takes 30 seconds or so but can I melt this old solder maybe there's an awful big blob of it. There we go. I need something else. There we go. Actually, that melted pretty easily. Probably high lead content for back in the day. And I know this is going to be hot. <laughs> I just used heat. So... There is my condenser. Let's touch the outside lightly. Yes, that is actually kind of roasty toasty, but not to the point where I think I'm going to burn myself. I can see it's doming, which I know that means it's bad with a regular capacitor, but this one I have literally no idea. No idea at all. I'm going to have to modify a few things, because this one obviously has a screw down on it. It has a nut but as for diameter wise it looks like it probably drift right into the original place this one came from I may be able to use my 12 millimeter yes I can same in same out There it is. Dang, that was a lot more manageable than I uh, would have anticipated. So, I'm going to turn off this and I need to find some loop connectors. Well, I changed my mind last minute. I, as soon as I put the fitting on there, I realized that was never going to work. So, I just went ahead and soldered the wires on there. Not the prettiest blob of solder on earth, but it's not falling off. Honestly, I may be stuck trying to find a stock condenser, which is not easy to find. At least not in my travels. But uh, hopefully that will work. Well guys, I suppose that's it for now. I have to wait for the clutch puller to come in before I can transfer the clutch over to the new crankshaft. And then we can put the engine back together and hopefully it will fire. Hopefully we will have spark. If not, uh, I have some more work to do. So keep your fingers crossed that this will work. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.